NFL week three picks of the week against a spread straight up props of the week, overall, just picking and gambling advice from a, a genius here at Campbell. You're hugging a, a little pillow. Is that you or your brother's pillow thing? It's my man. The, oh. the great Lauren Rensler, uh, the best publicist in the world, guys, William Raymond. Um, she gave me this for a Christmas present one year. And uh, that, I don't, that doesn't look I don't, like a Miami jersey, though, because you're a Miami player. It was from Yahoo. This is when I was working with Yahoo. At the oh, time. okay. Go, go. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, I don't want to be here. Fred just kidnapped me, guys. This is a uh, podcast track. He's been, he, he, he made me come here. I guess the views got really good when I called him a fantasy football whore. And now yeah. he's, he's forcing me to do this. I'm up earlier than I want to be. I'm on the West Coast. And uh, yeah, so. Speaking do you of want trafficking, uh, you're, uh, you're on because you're also a culture expert. What catch us up on the Diddy stuff? I've got a couple questions. Get, the game just said that Diddy tried to kill Drake. Uh, I mean, everybody's throwing something on him now at this point. My NDA won't let me talk about it because I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm joking. You, you <laughs> know what we're talking about. Diddy, get out of here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I would, um, I would I would have signed one to go to the party. The parties look fun. I didn't know they were that going on in there. I went to outside of one party. Me, Josh, uh, Raj were at in Miami for Super Bowl. We were at a party that was kind of lame. We seen all these fine girls walking in the building, but they weren't going to our party. They was going to Diddy's party, which was across the street. And I was trying to get into the Diddy party, and uh, I was high. And normally I get people in the parties, right? I'm like, oh shit, I'm smooth. Ha <laughs> ha, what's up, baby? How you doing? I used to play for you, whatever I did, right? But I was high, yeah. so I was thinking in my head. And I remember my homeboy came out my door. Oh, I don't want to say nothing more than that. Just oh, is his nickname. Because uh, mm. parties is kind of accusation at this point. Um, he was like, yo, what's up? You want to get in? I was like, yeah. I was like, uh, I got them with me too, though. And he just looked at me. And I just walked away because I was high. And I was like, yeah, we can't get in. <laughs> <laughs> Which maybe in hindsight, maybe he was like, yeah, you know, you wanted you guys in there because... It's better than yeah. girls, you know. That's what I said. Like I, I never been like I don't know what it feels like to be the bad bitch at a party. I didn't, I, you know, I, I never been, you know, like damn, they gonna spend it all on me. Everybody want to give mm-hmm. me drinks and whatnot. I would have liked that experience, you know. I'm not saying yeah. I would did anything but like to have at least gone to a ditty party and got an offer. Don't you feel like I would have loved it? You know, like is that too weird? No, because I feel like it would be a fun pro- progression. Like you'd be like, hey, cheers, champagne, and Jared, you'd be like, yeah, and then they'd be like, oh, that's like body shots and you're like yeah okay and then before you know it diddy's just pouring champagne down your cheeks you know that i mean it'd be a story uh, I'm, not, I'm hearing it out and you put it in detail i don't want it i don't, I don't want that at all <laughs> i thought it was gonna be more like i, I got a proposal. Like, I proposal for you man you want to become the biggest hottest rapper in the world all i need you to do is hang out on the couch with me for a second i'm like oh, i'm good but you just <laughs> <laughs> You play like Never Have I Ever, and before you know it, Diddy's just pouring champagne down your cheeks. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like when when you praise like that. I don't want that. That's that's not something I want at all. <laughs> Why you guys set me up in the group chat? By the way, just listeners, we've got like a group chat with that somehow progressed into everyone's wives and all the sisters, and it's all fine. It's great, but we also have like a just a few of us guys group chat where we just speak a bit more guy stuff. And Diddy got mm-hmm. lobbed into the chat, and I thought it was in. The guys only chat. So I said some like Bieber stuff. And then before I knew it and I couldn't delete it, I realized it was in like the wives chat. <laughs> yeah. That's that was an interesting art. Just for the viewers, I'm going with it. Whoever watches this enjoys it. We had a group chat that was based around fantasy football. It was men in fantasy football. It was the last thing we had left. And uh, mm-hmm. somehow one woman broke in and, and then I've realized, and this is just my theory. I don't think it's true for everybody. All women, wives, girlfriends want to be in their men's group chat. Every time they see you giggling on your phone and you laughing, they're like, I need to be in that. And so, like, they started planning. And once one woman got in, they were like, oh, so this girl can get in? And next yeah. thing you know, it's just like, yeah. I, every time I go on a date and I laugh, and girl's like, hey, what group chat is that? How many girls are in there? Why am I not in there? You're like, it's our second date. But, um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, our group chat is filled with women. So then we created a second one. And <laughs> I'm snitching. I'm working. I'm working. We have a second. I feel group like it's happened this. a couple of times where some some of us have like made that same mistake where we think we're in the men's chat and we talk shit and then all of a sudden we're like, oh no. Yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. Throw, we can't we can't talk about the hoes in the real group chat. We had to save that for the other one. 
I had like friends wives text me that to stop texting in the group chat. Cause I was like making them laugh too much. And like, they got put on like a, uh, a, a strict amount of time. They could be in the group chat on their phones. Wait a minute. You're on another group chat with friends and wives, bro. I feel like that's just, no, 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 just, no, 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 no. It was your you point. Like, oh, <laughs> are we just the black version of all your friend groups? You're like, yeah, I got a black version of this. Well, yeah, because this group chats my racist white friends from Texas. So, I mean, they're the, you know. There we go. Yeah. yeah you're like, they're you're not actually racist. Too, you're making me laugh too hard with your, what do you call a field full of afros? <laughs> 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 um, why did Diddy, can you, you must have an explanation and then we'll get off the day. We'll get into the football. Why a thousand bottles of lube? I mean, you can never have too much lube, right? Have you, I've never been in a situation where there was too much lube, but I have been in a situation where there is not enough. And I just feel like, yeah, act on the side of caution. <laughs> that is crazy. Maybe it was sponsored. Maybe it was like one of those things like, oh, my God. In the picture, in the picture I seen it, I was more upset about how nicely organized they were. I was like, maybe he's giving out gift bags. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I didn't see a picture. Now I need to Google it. That's yeah, incredible. there's a picture of like all the lube bottles. I don't know if that was somebody just playing around on the internet, but it was like a thousand lube bottles on like next to mirrors on like a table. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, I don't. Even, I could see yeah, like three bottles of lube in a house, but a thousand just seems excessive. I mean, man, what, if, what if you're shopping at Costco? Like, no, you. <laughs> you just get the big one. You get like the big. You get four right. big ones. Why would you? Why would you go back to get more lube? That just seems like a waste of time. Let's just get a lifetime supply and store it in one of the rooms. <laughs> it's all these houses. Can we listen to Diddy music anymore? Because we can't listen to R. Kelly. Like, I assume is Diddy completely out, or like you can still listen to like the hits? I be, I still fuck with R. Kelly music, bro. You can't, Ooh. you can't take the body of art and make the artist. Like everything you do, they just most people who are artists are kind of weird people. So like, you can't take. You can't take that. So I listened to all. I was just listening to TP2. That's a banger. I mean, honestly, babies were made to that. Like, I'm, I'm sure my nephews were probably made to TP2. So with that being the case, like, you can't just take away a whole existence of how people got here. Uh, as far as Diddy's music, though, Diddy's never had good music. Diddy won't have music that will survive. I Need a Girl was not him. That was, <laughs> that was Usher and Genuine. You can't take I Need a Girl and get at the Diddy. Diddy had... Uh, the police, he got sued for that. Doom, 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 doom. Every mm -hmm. move I make. Yeah. But other than that, you name name me another Diddy banger. Give me one right now. Come with me. Come with me. Senorita. That mean Diddy songs, is they? Yeah. You would be the guy listening to Diddy music, Frazier. That's I forgot that there's a barrier between us as far as race goes. Most black people aren't bumping Diddy music. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Diddy was very white. Hip hop music for sure. Yeah, Diddy, Dirty Money, all that. That was like things that black people were banging. I feel like that's something you like. Hey, we got a P Diddy album at our frat party. Let's <laughs> go ahead and bump this shit up in loving. <laughs> <laughs> we love Diddy, black people, yeah. right? Listen to this. I love this song. This is my favorite song, dude. Nah, that was that Diddy's <laughs> never been a top artist of the of the black community as far as like Diddy rapping. Yeah, that's fair. Um. Well, in the football, what are your thoughts on Bryce Young? Uh, like Tom Brady said, I feel like they rushed a guy. They traded him. They traded a heavy haul to get him. They threw him into a shitty offense in a shitty scenario. They changed coaches already. And uh, I just feel like you're, for you to throw away at him, I think that's a prime example of somebody who could get picked up from another team and rebuild his career. Much like I told you earlier, I think Sam Darnold might be good this year because it's his mm -hmm. last shot. I think Sam Darnold's going to be really good this year. I think you yeah. give someone four years to develop, fully understand what's going on, and then go out there and give it their best shot. Bryce Young has been playing with a shitty offensive line, no receivers. I mean, his best receiver is Adam Thielen, who if it was 10 years ago, would be great, but he hasn't been great because he's like 39. In football years, he's 106. And, mm -hmm. uh, and Deontay Johnson, I don't know why people are so high on Deontay Johnson. He wasn't that great with the Steelers. So, like, I mean, he doesn't have a Justin Jefferson. He doesn't have a Jamar Chase. I mean, you give Joe Burrow, the receiving core, you gave Bryce Young, and I think he would not have great numbers. I won't say he's as bad as Bryce Young. But, yeah, they're going to bench him, and I don't think any quarterback's going to come there and thrive. With that being the case, I feel like, Bryce, keep your head, bro. And at the end of the day, you're still the number one overall pick, bro. Can't nobody take that shit from you? You went to Alabama, won a championship. You good, man. It's crazy. The, this is like the biggest outpouring of support for a quarterback who got benched I've ever seen. Like everyone's all on Bryce Young, and I'm here for it. I think 
the Panthers are the worst franchise in the NFL. So, yeah, after Dan Snyder's gone, you really got to think, you know, who's next? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that dude's awful. Him Dan and uh, Jim Mercy. Dan Snyder's the diddy of the NFL. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, also, you mentioned Sam Darnold. So I mentioned in a stat earlier in a podcast that uh, Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold, since leaving the Panthers, have thrown 46 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. So I think I had a winner of the week. My winner of the week was Bryce Young from week two because he gets benched, and now hopefully he'll just get cut by the Panthers, and he can start afresh and be a happy, good player, and we can see his real talent shine. Yeah. I think Baker Mayfield is still a mediocre quarterback. <laughs> I don't think he's great. I think the bar – got set low for him because he was listed as a bust and now he's not a bust. But I don't think Baker Mayfield is going to win you a championship. He doesn't have that. I know he did some cool scramble last week. Sam Darnold, I'm high on him as he's going to get better. But let's not overreact as if he's great. He played against the Giants Mm -hmm. in secondary, which I don't think is great at all. And then the 49ers were in the AM spot from a West Coast team going East Coast. And traditionally, those teams perform terrible. And he still also has Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, who are two first-round picks, and one of them potentially the best receiver in the NFL. So, yeah, I, I still think there's work. You give Bryce – if you put Bryce Young in Minnesota, I think give him two years, he could become Jordan Love, Pro Bowl type of quarterback. Interesting. I'm worried about his size, but, yeah, his talent's all there. I'm with you. It's not the size of the quarterback. It's the motion of his legs. Ooh, that makes sense. Diddy said that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, do you believe in the Saints? I got, these are some questions I have for you because I don't have answers. Uh, it makes sense what they're doing. Like People threw away Derek Carr's if he's trash. Derek Carr's never been trash. He's, he's not a great quarterback, but he's definitely been suitable. Alvin Kamara's a great running back. They always had great receivers with speed. The defense is strong. They have a f- strong fan base. I think this is a sell-high opportunity. I feel like if, if we're talking betting, this is a good chance to fade them. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, they've been scoring 15 straight drives because people have been underestimating them. And I think if you come to prepare to play, I think this could be the week that the, the Saints aren't going to score 15 different drives and Derek Carr will throw two interceptions. But, yeah, I, I don't think they're going to be the greatest show on turf, Kurt Warner, even though they're putting up those kind of numbers right now. But, yeah. Cool right. to them there. Better. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Like they look nice, they're a nice story, but like you said, sell high. I can't trust them yet. Maybe do it a couple more times. But uh what are your thoughts about rookie QBs right now? Um, it's not looking good. I mean, it's early. Why do we, this is this is what I hate when everybody has podcasts and everybody has media and they just want to talk about shit. We're two weeks into the season, and what are you expecting? These quarterbacks that have five hundred yards and four touchdowns, are we just expecting? Those great, like most of the time, rookie quarterbacks are thrown into a situation where the team was shitty last year and they expect them to just turn things around. Caleb Williams got sacked like so many times that last game. His offensive line looked treacherous. There's a clip. I don't know if you can put clips up on here where one of the linemen didn't even touch the defensive line. He just let the guy come in and destroy Caleb Williams. Like, and Caleb Williams was crying from a loss. Give him one more week of that shit and he's going to be boo hooing like, goddamn, uh, I'm going to get you sucker. That motherfucker will be crying. But, um, I don't think they're bad. Uh, I just think we got to give it time. That's what I've been saying on the podcast is I just didn't like all the hype that they were given. I think they'd just been like, oh, yeah, a rookie class is coming in. They might be pretty good, one player. But it was like Caleb Williams is the next. Andrew Luck, he's the best prospect in 10 years. Jane Daniels is the next Lamar. Bo Nix is this. It's like I think the players who are going to be the best are Drake May and Michael Penix, to be honest, and J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, you get a chance to learn. It's kind of the less pressure. Uh, so, yeah, that, that would be beneficial. Uh, also not going I to think, a shit team. I do think Caleb Williams is still good, though. I think that, like, you've seen the flashes of he has the it factor. Like, don't you can't deny that. I think the interceptions, obviously, the offensive line and him not having time. But if you look at their two games, they beat a Titans team that looks to be pretty decent. Not terrible. Obviously, the defense won them the game. But uh, And then the Texans, who are one of the best teams in football, they only mm-hmm. lost by six. And they had a couple mm-hmm. of, like, unfortunate turnovers. So it's not like the Bears are bad. I think the Bears are probably in the best situation they've been in in years. Uh, you, you, you kind of wonder if they kept Justin Fields and used those picks on other positions, how good they would yeah. be. But, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're a Bears fan, I, I would walk around with my Bears gear again. This is the 80s. That, damn it, be happy. <laughs> I think they've got an easy game this week, too, against the Colts. So they could be 2-1. They have but, an uh, easy schedule. I was trying to convince Claire to go to the do. Bears. They do. 
Yeah. Players had an offer to go to the Bears uh, for $5 million. And he was like, no, I want to take close to league minimum to go to Miami Dolphins because I think they're going to win the championship. And I said, dummy, you look at me right now in my eyes. And I said, you're going to the Bears. Y'all will have the best defense. It's going to be Saxville 2.0. Y'all going to win a championship with that young quarterback. And he was like, no. Nah. And now look at him. I'm not saying the Dolphins are bad. The Dolphins are good. They're still going to do their thing. But that Bears defense is for fucking real. You're, you're first. I I don't see it, but I mean, they'll be all right. And like you said, what an you easy mean, schedule. They just held CJ Stroud, Stefan Diggs, Tank Dale, Nico Collins to 19 points. Yeah. They also, held, they also held Will Levis, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin <laughs> Ridley, and Tony Pollard to 17 points or 13 points. <laughs> They're official. That second group is much better than, and yeah, Tony Pollard in 2002, 2022 was great. And DeAndre yeah. Hopkins in 2015 was the best receiver in football. And Calvin True. Ridley, when he was when he was betting, when, when betting Calvin Ridley was playing, boy, you couldn't stop him. And Will Levis in college, he was throwing really well too. So yeah, if you take yeah. them all in, out of that situation, you're right. The Bears would have killed them. Yeah, that makes sense. I like to play this game. This is just where I throw race into it for no reason. Let's yeah. take a few quarterbacks and make quarterbacks white and see how much you like them. And let's take a few quarterbacks and make them black and tell me how much you think they're bad. Right. All right. The first one I want to do is this. Make Mac Jones a black quarterback with a gold grill. Do you like him? <laughs> I think he'd done a bit more, right? He was rookie of the year. I would have loved him year one, but he's just been is like shit Jones? overall. I don't think I think if people, Mac Jones was in the Patriots. He was in New Orleans, I mean, in New England with mm. gold teeth, and he was just <laughs> talking shit to people the way he did. People were like, fuck Mac Jones. All right, all right, hear me out, hear me out. All right, this is my, this is my favorite. I, honestly, all right. If Baker Mayfield was black, if Baker oh, yeah. Mayfield, he kind of is I mean, black. Uh, I mean, he does dancing. We can't just give out black cards for doing with Dougie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like him more if it was just, you know, this light skinned dude with a fade. I don't know. Is that weird? It's very no. racist. It's just, it's just where I'm at. I'm fine with it. I think right, Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins are the same. Like, they're just the white and black version of each other. Oh, wow. That would make Dak Prescott overly, overly paid at $60 million a year. But, yeah, I like yeah. that. Like it's, it's reparations in such sense. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you got next? Oh, is it, we're still doing this game? Right, I thought you said it. you had one more. Let's, let's go with ancient quarterbacks. Do you think if Tom Brady was black, he would have ghost status? <laughs> if Tom Brady is, was black, I feel like there'd be so many quarterbacks being like, this guy's so overrated, he cheated half his career. <laughs> Ninety percent of his fan base. It'd be ninety percent of his fan base would be like, "Fuck that guy." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't have an answer to that one. I think I'll stay away. No, I, I, I want to get you canceled. All right, and this is my last one. We'll do this. All right. If Michael Vick was white, <laughs> only you'd be that fast, right? He wouldn't no, even be able to be Michael fast. Vick. That fast, he was fucking. He was he was arch manning fast. He was. <laughs> It was Michael Vick, white Michael Vick, but like, but like suit, like Mac Jones suit wearing white, but he was just fast they, and had an arm like he did as a lefty. They would, they would let the dogs go. They'd be like, ah, you know what? People make mistakes. It's yeah, okay. He, he wasn't paying attention. He had taxes to worry about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I think if Michael Vick was white, he'd be ranked top three. It'd be like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Michael Vick. Yeah. That's All fair. Right. Yeah. I love him. Michael Vick, watching him as a player, was electric. I think we all know that. He was my favorite player growing up, man. Michael Vick changed yeah. the game. I remember back in 2000, like, was it 2007, 2006, uh, 2006 uh, Madden. You could literally I was about just to run, say Madden. <laughs> you could run all the way back to your end zone and just shake. Like, I don't know if fatigue was a thing back then, but you just fucking shake everybody and then run a touchdown with Michael Vick. <laughs> yeah. Michael Vick was unstoppable in Madden, and so was Dante Culpepper and Randy Moss. You could just throw up Damn, a of Randy bro. Moss. And it was just... your age, bro. What was this, cute quarterback club you were playing on 64? <laughs> yeah, you know like, yeah, I'm playing Dante Culpepper and Ron. <laughs> it's 1999. Yeah, tell everybody you're a vampire, Fred. You guys didn't know Fred is 68 years old. He just True. looks young. It's all there. Backwards on. hat, and I look black and young. It's perfect. Yeah. No, I seen a picture of Frazier in black and white, and I was like, yo, this is Frazier from 1932. He's a vampire. <laughs> age. Uh, so I went with my picks. I always like to go back on my picks from week two and see things I learned, like my losses. I killed it week two. How did you do? 
Uh, I did all right, actually. Um, I knew, first of all, all the favorites lost. So, like, if you're a favorite better, you got killed. You were just like, mm-hmm. what? How do, the, how do the coach not win? But uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I do this thing where I like to live bet. I like to watch a game a little bit. And I'm, if you're smart live betting, you just bet the opposite of how things are going. Yeah. And so I went to halftime, and I seen they had, like, the – they had the – Colts are like plus 11 and a half at plus money. And I was like, yeah, they're going to get beat. But Anthony Richardson should score a touchdown. And I had almost, you know, I had a heart attack for a little bit, but they, they did well. Uh, I picked the Raiders to keep it close. I had them plus nine and a half. If I would have picked the money line, that would have been great. But like outside of that, yeah. it was a terrible week for anybody who bet pregame because all these things you want, you couldn't tell me you didn't think the Eagles were going to beat the Falcons at that home. Wasn't that- yeah, you couldn't tell me you didn't think that the Rams would beat the Cardinals. Don't get me wrong. The Rams look so good week mm-hmm. one, and they just look terrible. Uh, the Lions lost to the Bucks. The Packers with Mac Willis. I mean, uh, I had, Malik Willis. I had both of those Mac- wins. I had uh, Malik Willis winning. I also had uh, the Buccaneers. Hey, because you're a Baker Mayfield. you like anybody that can do the Dougie. That's your thing. <laughs> uh, the 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 Bills beating the, the Dolphins was the worst one for me this week, though. And that's because I, mm-hmm. I have. I have biasy, and I, I obviously at the beginning of the year I told you the bills are going to be trash, and I still stand by that. I would, I would, if I just took ten dollars and I bet the opposite, the money line of every team against the bills this year, I bet you I come out in the profits. I bet you you don't, but that that was one of the things we we disagreed on at the start of the year. But that's that's all right. One of us Let's has to be wrong. All right, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take ten dollars, and every week I'm just gonna take whoever the bills are playing, the opposite team money line. They're five and a half point favorites against the Jaguars, and uh, my pick of the week, my lock of the week, is Jaguars money line. Wow, that's a bold. That's bold. No, I went. Uh, all right, I went Only seven the- and four with my locks against the spread, seven four and one. But oh, to your point, no. I said the Rams was brutal because who knew? The Eagles, like you said, who knew? The Chiefs, I said stay away from that game because it was like if Joe Burrow was healthy, they'd keep it close, but we had no idea if he was healthy or not. It wasn't Joe Burrow that made that game. It was the fact that Pat Mahomes was like, I like throwing interceptions, and I don't really want to give the ball to, uh, to Isaiah Pacheco on the goal line. I want to see if I can just see if Travis Kelsey can run it in. And They got to yeah. like the one-yard line like three times and couldn't score. Is Travis Kelsey washed? It's Taylor Swift effect, bro. When you're out there on tour, man, you got to think about it. The Ailes tour was worldwide. He was out there at every one just drinking. He got on stage one time. He ain't in the weight room when that shit's going on, bro. Travis Kelsey is now a pop star. Do you think Taylor Swift is pregnant or she just gained a little bit of weight because Kelsey, as we know, likes a little bit of extra on the backside? Mm, I think it's a a sham of a relationship and he's still pounding strippers' cheeks at strip clubs and Taylor Swift's the face. Would you marry Taylor Swift if you were him? That's kind of like a good business business decision, right? Like business. marriage should be made for business decisions. So anybody ever tell you married for? That. Up until like movies came out, nobody married for romance. Like I love this woman. You married was like this is financially good for my family and their family. We'll have an allyship of defense. You know, therefore, we're marrying. And then you would still go out and do your thing, but you just had alliance, and that was a strong marriage. Now people were like, I feel this way around you, and I want to marry you. And then after that feeling's gone, you were like, I can't stand you. Inconsolable differences. Let's get this shit over. Let me take half this shit. That's a good stance on true love and marriage. Crazy. If they got married, obviously there'd be some kind of prenup, but like just imagine if they got married for two years and then Kelsey retires at three years and he retires from the NFL and Taylor Swift's still making billions of dollars from a catalog. She's gonna have to pay some heavy alimony, bro. Like he might win the record of most alimony checks. She's gonna be like the Taylor Swift be the Mel McKenzie Bezos. Yeah, you're right. I wonder, I think you have to propose instantly, right? Like if I was him, I'd be like, propose. I love you. You're the love of my life. And just try and lock that in ASAP before they, you know, break up. Yeah, because she got a track record of getting, you know, it's a lot of mm-hmm. motherfuckers passed on Taylor Swift. It wasn't like she mm-hmm. was, you know, hot come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, well, jumping into week three picks, Patriots, Jets, Jets six and a half. What are your thoughts? Jets, bro. <clears throat> Patriots overperformed the first two weeks, which is, you know, you got a new Ooh. coach, you're hungry. Uh, they're one and one in those two, so it's not like they're great. They, they lost. Uh, and I, I, I personally think that the Jets have been underperforming. Obviously, that first uh, Monday night game was 
bit bad, but that was against the Niners at home. Aaron Rodgers' first game back. Second half of last game, he looked like he was back. Uh, Patriots do have a new defense, and they're kind of, you know, young and shocked the world. Mm -hmm. But this is a Jets game where it's less than a touchdown, and I just felt like Aaron Rodgers at home, and I was seeing something with sharp money, you know. That's where all the big betters that know something, you know. These days mm -hmm. in the NFL, you be seeing some of these flags. You're like, damn, I don't know if this is random. And so, therefore, you know, sharp money's like, I got a billion dollars on, on the Jets minus six. Don't let it lose. And so, the rep be out throwing pass interference and still silly <laughs> shit. Like, a legal hands to the face on the defense, on the offense. The lineman looked like he was touching his nose. You know, all that bullshit. That's fair. I, uh, I'm taking the Patriots. I just think they keep it close. I don't think the Jets have shown us much. They beat the, the, the uh, Titans by, like, six. And I think the Patriots are better than the Titans. So... I don't think the Patriots are good. I just think they lose by three. Why? Ramon J. Stevenson, <clears throat> Jacoby Brissett. What is, what, they, what is the actual <clears throat> tangible difference other than they look pretty good the last two games that you feel like this team should be able to hang? Are they, they going to expose that defense? Just coaching overall. Yeah, I think lack of stupid plays. Will Levis is the worst quarterback in the league. And uh, has, does he not throw two boneheaded decisions? They could be 2-0. and So I think the Patriots – are better than the Titans. It's not by a ton, but I think they'll just play a lot more structured game, like less bullshit. They just old school, pound the ball, play defense, shut the fuck up, and they leave with the three point loss. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. So I think they'll be all right. And Britt Brissett's kind of like a sneaky, I don't know, is he like Jared Goff, but maybe not as good, but maybe Jared he is? Goff. Jared Goff is a former first overall pick. Jared Goff. Took a, to, uh, the Rams to the Super Bowl. Like, Brissett is, uh, Brissett is a modern-day Matt Castle. You know, it's like, oh, right. he's not terrible as a backup, but he's definitely not the guy you want to be like, this is the face of my franchise. <laughs> I was just making sure I wanted to test your uh, your black allegiance. So, I know you're... I mean, right. I, I, this is the part that's sad. I really only like black quarterbacks that can run. <laughs> like, like, I've never been a... I'm not a... I'm not a Geno Smith guy. I'm just, you know. Mm -hmm. That's bad. Okay. You know Geno Smith's name is Eugene? Ooh. That's an old black name. That's a, yeah, it's a thing. He must have, like, that must be a family name that gets passed down because nobody names their kid Eugene post-1936. <laughs> I can see Dave being named Eugene. Dave who? Like our Dave. It doesn't go by Dave, and if he hears that, he'd be pissed at you, man. He's been oh, Davey David. since he was a kid. Yeah, no, every time well, they, I, fuck, I want to fuck with him, I'm like, hey, Dave. He's like, you know, because Dave gets mad, but he doesn't say anything. I just like to pick on him, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, he tried, to kill Severn. he tried to kill Severn. You remember that? No. Yeah, every time I give him shit, man, my brother Severn, man, we were playing volleyball. I think you started it. We were playing drunk beach volleyball. Oh, yeah, yeah. I took man, down we, Ike. We started abroad. I think I had made Dave, Dave V mad because I kept going, this motherfucker sucks in volleyball. And he was <laughs> mad at me. And so somehow we started brawling with the other team. And Davey was on me and Severn's team. And then yeah. I seen he was choking Severn out. And he's like, hey, Davey, it's over. Let it go. And they tried to lift Davey off of him. And as they lifted Davey up, Severn was coming up with him and checking the show. And I was like, hey, I killed Severn, man. It's your teammate. I, as that brawl was breaking out, you had to quickly, like, look at the other team and see, like, who you squared off against. And I saw Ike. And Ike's, like, a big dude. He's my height. He's, like, a heavier. He's not athletic, but... I was I like, I, I saw like my opportunity. Ike wasn't really paying attention because I couldn't do this to him if he was paying attention. But I blindsided, hit, tackled, took him down, carried both legs. I, I fucked him up. I was on top of him. You yeah, got like, a lucky day, man. Ike's not mentally right, right? I do, oh, you, yeah. You know what Ike used to do? All right, I'm three years younger than Calais, Josh, Davey, and Ike. And Ike, I was, you know, a good freshman in high school football. So they would always throw me with the varsity and I was out there giving them work. But Ike had a, like a vendetta against freshman players that were on varsity. So Ike, we would do these hidden drills. You know, I think they outlawed him now because high school soft. But Ike would purposely position himself. He would like, go ahead, you go ahead, <laughs> just so he could get it with me. And he would just try to destroy me every time. And I would just remember, like, what the fuck, bro? Just I'm just trying to live. Man, I had class this morning, man. Let me go. And Ike was like, nah, bro. Every time you have to feel my pain. And I said, man, I'm your teammate, Ike. I'm your fucking teammate, Ike. <laughs> <laughs> I never dotes I like them more, but back then I was like, "Fuck you." <laughs> what uh, position did Ike play? I've only known him as like kind of overweight. He lost Ike. Like, Ike was an oversized linebacker. He was a fucking neck weird number fifty two. He had a neck collar. You know, motherfucker just liked to hit. Yeah, he didn't care about like trying to catch interceptions. He was like, "Nah, 
fuck the football. I want to get the player. And this back when you could like lower your helmet and crown like fuck people up. Yeah, Ike is a problem. <laughs> I, I think out of the whole Campbell family, like Severn is by far, even though Clay is, is a monster, Severn is like the person who scares me the most. I just, I see him being that same as Ike, just an absolute nutcase on the field. Severn, he didn't, he didn't develop. In high school, I was twice the player as Severn. I don't yeah. mean that with all my heart. Severn's more athletic <laughs> than me now. He's faster than me, stronger than me, hits harder. But in high school, I was, everybody thought I was going to be tall because Calais was 6'8", Severn was 6'5", and I was like mm -hmm. six foot as a freshman, and I was mm -hmm. strong and fast. And everybody was like, you're going to be 6'9", you're going to be mm -hmm. great at all this shit. And I just stayed the same, but I peaked. Uh -huh. like, I was the best high school player in Colorado, I felt like. Everybody knew it. And all the coaches uh -huh. were like, you the best Campbell. You think Calais good. Where do you see this Jared go out there and play? But yeah, Severn is, is, is decent. He grew into it in college. He got really good, but in high school, he was. Hmm. Where else did you get offers? Me, I was gonna. I was committed to Washington. I was gonna play in Washington with a couple really? of my friends. Yeah, and then I went there and it was freezing. And uh, all right, this is an interesting story. My mom, my dad had died like three years earlier, so my mom and me were going to recruiting just the first time ever. And uh, it was weirdly enough, my mom was pursuing me to go to coaches that had handsome young black men as head coaches. <laughs> <laughs> My two jerseys came between Washington and Miami, who happened to have Tyrone Willingham and a bunch of young black men under him, and Randy Shannon and a bunch of young, handsome black men. And that's how they would get recruited. They'd be hitting on your mama, man. And like, oh, Miss Campbell, let me get some more of that food. And hey, let's talk when the kids ain't around. And and so my mom was being swayed. These motherfuckers was cheating. <laughs> nah, give me the money like you're giving all the other five star recruits. Don't be trying to hit on my mama to get a freebie. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was I was getting recruited a lot, but like Arizona State, New uh, Nebraska, Washington. Uh, I set up recruiting visits to both Colorado State and Wyoming, who are like rivals, who are like forty five minutes away, on mm -hmm. the same weekend on accident. I didn't know because I didn't really want to go to either of those schools. <laughs> <laughs> and so then the Duke King came, and I was like, "Oh, uh, I committed to Washington. I'm not going." <laughs> <laughs> what a young punk I was! That was a bad way to handle it. I should have went to both of them. I should have just did Saturday at one and Friday, Sunday at another one. But yeah, yeah. I, and ultimately I chose to go to Miami because I went on my recruitment visit on Super Bowl weekend. It was <laughs> the Super Bowl was there, and it was like February second, like a week before signing day. And I'm with Calais as my host, and we're at Club Bed, and Uncle Luke's there with like 15 of the finest women you ever seen. And he's like, "Y'all can hang out at my bottle service." And then he leaves, and we have bottle service. And keep in mind, I'm a 17 year old kid. Oh Hope we don't God. get in trouble for this. But yeah, and I was like, "Oh shit, Miami's where I need to be." And then I realized that was just Super Bowl weekend, and that's not a weekend in Miami. Is that so? Clayus was there when you. How long did you guys play together? Two years. We played, we played one year together, man. Not even one year. Clayus was there for like four months, and then he was like, "I'm going to the NFL. I'm living in LA." And so I got, <laughs> I got, I got homesick my second year. The first year I was with my brother chilling, eating food and shit. He already a top guy. Second year I was like, "Yo, man, I, I want to leave. I almost, I almost transferred. I almost transferred to your alma mater. I almost transferred to Texas Tech." Oh wow. Yeah. What year was they me, that? They had me like, after my freshman year, they had me like seventh on the depth chart. I had like played my freshman year. I was good. And they had me like mm -hmm. real low. And I was like, fuck this school. I hate it. And yeah. I remember I talked to my boy Chris Perry at Transit Test. He was like, yo, the coach said he wants you. He talked to you. So then the coach like hit me up and we were talking. And I had an offer. And I was like, I'm about to go there. And I remember my brother Jamar stopped. Me, man, my brother Jamar was like, yo, bro. I don't know what you got going on there, but you don't want to live in Lubbock, Texas. Like, if, even if you don't play football. Miami is a much better city than Lubbock, Texas. And yeah. I said, all right, fuck it. It's true. And then I, I remember being like, I don't give a fuck about the football team. I don't care. I'm not going to meetings. And I'm going to hit whoever I don't like. And I'm going to do shit my way. And I promise you, I went from seventh on the depth chart. Literally, right about to transfer in December. By the time in August next year, I was starting week one against Florida State. That is the craziest shit ever, bro. Like, I literally was just, like, fucking people up in practice, not going to meetings and not paying attention to what the coaches were trying to coach me, and it worked. <laughs> or, like, if there's anything, there's, like, books about, like, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. It's the biggest yeah. secret I can give you in this life. This is a motivational podcast now. Fuck sport pigs. Don't give a fuck. When you come to bed and just go, fuck it. Go with whatever – Go wherever you see the hottest women with the jersey on. You're like, yeah, the fucking that bitch with the Jets jersey was sexy. Like, Jets minus seven. Take them on the alternate spread line. That's what we're doing. The subtle art of not giving a fuck about your sports betting picks. I like it. Also, can I add this? Because I got to yeah. put in it. I am realizing that some people are not gambling comfortably. 
obviously you're a pretty smart guy with discipline, Frazier, mm-hmm. but gambling can get out of hand. And therefore, I, if you're watching this podcast really looking for picks, like shit you really need to win, nobody fucking knows. I don't know shit. Frazier doesn't know shit, guys. If this is not money that you're comfortable losing, if this is not money that you're like, it's all right, I'm going to throw a punt in the air, by all means, don't bet it. In fact, that's why I almost encourage everybody, just take the underdog money line because it's money you should expect to lose anyways. And if it wins, it's a better story. Who doesn't like rooting for an underdog? But yeah, if you're betting some money that you really need, go fuck yourself. No, don't fuck yourself. Don't, don't, don't bet that money. <laughs> I like that. That's good. That's brilliant. <laughs> what year was that? Like, was that 2005, 2004, 2006, where you were about to transfer to Texas Tech? No, that was uh, they were good. That was Michael Krebs who was there the year before. I was before. gonna say an alternate universe. We would have been at Texas Tech at the same time. No, this was in two thousand eight. Yeah, 2000. I probably 2008 was, was Crabtree. Two thousand two thousand eight going into two thousand nine season. Oh, okay, I would have just left. And Crabtree obviously just left. Is what you're saying? I got you. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I started in two thousand nine in Miami. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Did you see any uh, like? What was the most money you saw got given to a player that was off the record? Or did yeah, you see that? Yeah, man. I can't snitch like that, man. What kind of shit is that, man? We got a microphone you have to say on. The, you don't have to say the player, but did you see that happen? It's, it's allowed now, right? So Miami had a booster named Nelvin Shapiro, right? Oh, that's the guy <laughs> that was on the show. Was he on the, like, the U show? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, Nelvin wasn't that big. He, the U, the first one, was about the 80s. And Nelvin wasn't, he wasn't a Ponzi scheme artist then. Um, and then like the two thousands is when he started being prevalent and then it went all the way till I was there in 2007 to 2011. Mm-hmm. And I was upset because I remember they always used to be talking about how much fun they have. And I remember once I knew, I ain't going to say, who was like, yo, Kevin, you're playing good. So-and-so you might be able to get you some bags. And I, and I kind of looked back at it and I realized that Nevin Shapiro didn't give me shit. And I feel bad. I, I, I'm upset. Not that I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't take no money for somebody. I'm like, nah, fuck that. Where was my cut? Y'all was making money and not telling me. I was wondering how people had all this nice shit. I thought they was getting money from Connor Smith. We had a dude, uh, FedEx's son was on our, the owner of FedEx's son was on our team. And I was like, oh, he giving a bag to somebody, but it wasn't him. It was Nelvin Shapiro. And I found that out later. And I was like, yo, Nelvin, fuck you. I hope you go to prison for life, motherfucker. You didn't give me shit. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a take that it was actually like teams that gave their players money cared more about student athletes than people didn't. So it's like been a flip. It's like, yeah, you know what, FSU, Miami, whoever else, like, they actually were doing the right thing. They were like the real utopian yeah. schools to go to, not these people who are hiding money from their players. This is a rumor, but I heard it from several players that, like, uh, I could say the school, fuck it. Ole Miss was, like, one of the biggest that, like, will throw you that bag. And, like, they would just mm-hmm. take you on a visit, and they would have a car there. and be like, that's your car when you get here. And they were like, you should look in the trunk of your car, and the car would be a bag of money. Oh. Yeah, this is back when cash was big. Right now, you probably could get paid Bitcoin under the table. But, <laughs> but yeah, and like you, like, oh shit! All I gotta do is sign the Ole Miss, and I get this car with the money in it. And they're like, yeah. And then like, yeah, but you also gotta live in Mississippi for four years. So, is mm. it worth it? I don't know. But yeah, that Ole Miss was the one that was giving out that bag. Wow, I wonder. Uh, Texas Tech all of a sudden has money. I don't understand. I guess there's a lot of rich oil people in that. Northwest Texas area. I just feel like, I don't know, love of Texas seems like not everybody got good teeth. You know, it just seems like there's not a lot mm-hmm. of prime dentistry there. So I guess was, teeth is a good example of financial wealth, right? That is, you see good people with good teeth, I mean, there's some good money around there. And I just feel like every I, time I, if I ask ChatGPT to draw a picture of a man from Lubbock, it's going to be somebody with a toothpick and a and a overalls hanging with no undershirt. Yeah, I went to Lubbock and they have like the whole downtown is bricks, like brick streets, like just like this size. I was like, damn, it was kind of pretty because it's like when you ever see just brick and handmade brick streets. And I asked them, I was like, wow, like this is really cool. And they're like, oh, yeah, they made it. They had prisoners make it back in the day. I was like, wait a second. They called them. Yeah, they were like, once you run away, you're a criminal. And then- <laughs> prisoners. <laughs> And I've never seen like cotton fields in my life. It's like just surrounded. I'm like, this, this seems a little scary. Yeah. A place to as, be. A, as a half uh, indigenous Canadian to then yeah. move to Lubbock, Texas has to be the biggest change of scenery and culture. Yeah, that was a, that's why I said, I feel like I've been to like Thailand and Cambodia and wherever the hell else like that. 
going from liberal ass Canada to Lubbock, Texas was the wildest yeah. thing in my life. Yeah. I, I um, like it. Yeah, but overall, I'm so glad I didn't go to Texas Tech. That would have been the ruin of me, man. That sounds like yeah. a terrible place. I would have had twins with some like chunky freshman girl while I was there. And then I had to live in Texas and work at a car dealership under the table. And yeah, I'm so glad I didn't do that. I'll, I promise I'll move on and we'll get to the picks, but I also bring this up. So Texas Tech was ranked 22nd this year in recruiting and USC was ranked 25th in recruiting. And I just want to say that I don't want any of these fucking Texas Tech players on my team because it's already shown that they make really bad life decisions. It's like you can go to USC and be like a king of L.A. or you can go to Lubbock, Texas. And these fucking guys are picking Lubbock, Texas. I'm just very confused. Well, now, I mean, honestly, this is the shitty part of it. I'm on, I guess I sound like Nick Saban here, but like college football is a clusterfuck. There's no such thing. I would say that 80% of the roster that's recruited to that team this year will not finish their career in Texas Tech. I think it's almost like a, uh, a hopscotch, you know, you just literally like, I'm going to spend my first year at Texas Tech, get a starting job, build up, go hit the portal, see what kind of money and NIL deals are offered to me, probably finish off at Ole Miss or Alabama. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's where you're at right now. I feel like, Texas Tech is a starting ground. If I was a freshman getting recruited, I would go to where I can reach the field first as the place I would go to, and then I would try to transfer portal my way to, like, a top-tier school. That's got to be so tough to be a 17-year-old kid and, like, weigh the money side, like, how much does this school offer me, the getting paid – or, sorry, playing side, like, how much playing time am I going to get? Also, being, like, on a national stage so you can get drafted. It's just, like, you're fucking 17. Maybe your parents – have never handled that kind of wealth or plans you know the in Jalen, their life. You know the Jalen Rosada story? No, I don't even know who I, that is. He was a top quarterback, like a five-star or four-star quarterback from California. He originally committed to Miami. He was on a $9 million NIL deal. Then he decommitted from Miami and he went to Florida because Florida said they'll give him $10 million with like five of it up front. And then they didn't have the money all the way together or they didn't, so they tried to backtrack. So then he ended up committing to Arizona State. He played like five games at Arizona and it wasn't great. And then he, I don't know where he's at now, but he's not there at Arizona State anymore. But now he's suing Florida because he felt like they lied to him about the money and it hurt his career. And so he's trying to get his money from NIL from Florida, even though he didn't go there. And like, hmm. that's just like, I feel like the first step of how bad and like where we're going to head with the NIL. And that's crazy. Like I've always been an advocate for paying players. It just has hmm. to be done with more organization. It's the wild, wild west right now. And so with that being the case, Go ahead. Yeah, that's why I said from the start, I, I, Nate was against it because he said it held, he had like a reason about it, how it didn't allow players freedom as much. But I think there should be a salary cap and all your donors can put in, let's just say it's a million dollars or 10 million or a hundred million, whatever that is. Each school gets salary cap and then you get, if it's five or seven players or 10 players, you get to put them into column A and column A, they get a hundred grand a year, 200 grand a year, whatever it is. Then you get like column B, you can pay them 75 grand or hundred, whatever, you know, and just you have a salary cap and the best players get the highest scholarship. And that's, and maybe if you have more money, like it, they can tie it in. So like in soccer, the better your team does and the money you make in, that's how much you can spend. So it's still capitalism. So like Real Madrid can spend way more than Borussia Dortmund, or maybe that's a bad example, but so yeah, it's kind of like that. So Alabama still gets more money because there's success. But it's yeah. also not fucking some stupid, absurd amount. I think they should make it where you get a base minimum for anyone on the team. I think mm -hmm. they should just, if you're on the team, you get $500,000, you make it to this squad. That way yeah. it'd be precious to even have a scholarship there and people wouldn't be so pressed to just leave. And then on top of that, you still have a, a urge for people to want to go there. But also there's a competition of like, hey, I might take five hundred, I might take $100,000 less to go to this school, but I have more opportunities. So mm -hmm. I, I, I just... It can't be where I'm like, I can't really root for players on the University of Miami because they may not be there next year. Now I'm rooting yeah. against it. It's stupid. And then I th also think maybe you get kind of like the NBA, you can make more money the longer you stay with the team. So base is 500. Your second year, the base is a, a million. But if you move to Mississippi, you're back at the base of 500 kind of thing. Boom. Look, at did we just solve this, man? Let's get this I on think paper. So. Close it to the NCAA. Yeah. We can we be GMs. We should be GMs of college football teams. That'd be funny. Isn't that what uh, Woj just did? He was just like, yo, fuck all this dropping bombs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to go be a GM of my high school alma mater basketball team. St. Bonifier. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I thought it was going to be like, I'm going to uh, 
I thought it was gonna be like I'm going to Duke or you know some top Kentucky, school. You're yeah. like, yeah. He's like, no, I want to go live in a small ass town in Saint Bonaventure. <laughs> Where I think it's Saint Bonaventure. Where even is that? I don't know. Google it. Where's your yeah. guy? Yeah, where's our? It is a private university in the city of Olean, New York. I wonder if that's where's near the city. It better be because if he's in upstate New York, that's Allegheny. Terrible. Allegheny is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, oh, that's it's not, real upstate. It's almost yeah, near Buffalo. Like, yeah, Buffalo, Syracuse. That's a terrible part of America. People think about like I've never been to some of them deep South parts where you know there's not a big city around, so I'm pretty sure it doesn't suck. But Buffalo, New York, I told you last time, is not a, my favorite city. That's a bad city. Yeah, that's fair. I went to a wedding in upstate New York. It was like two hours north of New York, so nothing too crazy. It was gorgeous. It was a very green. Like, it was the greenest place I've ever been. I have a theory, and this would, hopefully you can clip this out and make it something big. Uh, the West Coast is much more visually appealing just on the nature side than the East Coast. East Coast, just a bunch of trees that don't even make sense next to each other. And you ever just drove through like rural New Jersey? Shitty place. But like driving through Arizona, like just the ragged, random Arizona, so beautiful. Getting to California and seeing all the cliffs and things like it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. By far, West Coast is a much visually and pleasing place than, than uh, the East Coast. And I wonder if it's a, a full circle because that's where the Ring of Fire is, where it's got the most. Uh, natural disasters, which is where the west coast of the U.S. and Canada is, and because they've also had the uh, seismic activity that's made the mountains. So is that kind of like, hey, it's high scarier risk, to reward. be there? Yes, exactly. Took the words out of my mouth. High risk, high reward. Yeah, yeah I, I like it. I think it. I'll risk an earthquake at some point in my life to have a beautiful beach in warm weather, rather than being mm-hmm. like, I don't have no earthquakes, but I also got to go shovel the snow every Thursday. Yeah, get out of here with that shit. And imagine you lived in Kansas and you had like the worst of both. It's like a tornado could kill me and I also have nothing to look at. It's fucking shithole here. Here's my theory, Frazier. Imagine Ooh. you go buy a five bedroom house in Canada, right? I mean, in Kansas. And then you just yeah. get the Google or Meta Quest 7. <laughs> you just put your virtual reality glasses on. You go drink your tea on your porch and you're looking at the most beautiful, serenic view you've ever seen. You have simulation rooms, yeah. man. We're in the future with technology, bro. Make this room look like I'm in Thailand and why in YPP, YPP Island in this room in Kansas. That's where we're at with technology, man. And it only costs you two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I like that you call it the city of Waikiki, YPP Island. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's not YPP. Yeah. I forgot. This I don't think so. No, I think it's a, so Waikiki. Yeah, yeah. YPP is on the other side. It's more beautiful. It's oh, more beautiful. Yeah. okay. Maybe you're right then. Yeah, you don't know. Uh. All right, well, I love it. We have to have some great stories. Yeah, let's do it. Vikings, Texans, Texans minus two. Um, I'm going with the Vikings. Texans look great. They look amazing, and everybody wants them. Uh, Vikings are secretive. Obviously, they said, I think Justin Jefferson is going to be back. That contusion shouldn't hold him out. Uh, They're at home. Sam Donald looks like he has a lot of points to win. I think the... The Texans are a great defense and a great offense, but I just feel like, fuck it, go with the Vikings. Home dogs. Yeah, I, I, was, I was back and forth. I agree. The Vikings have, it's not fantasy football that matters, but they have the number one fantasy football defense in the league. And now and they played the 49ers, which, you know, one of the, they scored 100 points on the Jets. Yeah, the great Brock Purdy, right? Tom Brady, yeah. Brock Purdy guy. Give me your, because uh, I was going to talk about like prop bets for each game, and I was going to go, I'm going to go with a shootout, Stroud and Darnold, parlay those overs together. Where do you stand on, what's your favorite bet to make, I guess, live bets you mentioned? I think anything over a three-team parlay is absurd. I know you don't like parlays at all, but like, once you yeah. try and get greedy with four or five teams, it's a wrap. I told you it should be money you should lose. At this point, just take $10 every week and get five. Just get a five dog. And if you win that one every 17 times, you made money. Yeah, all right. Chargers, Steelers. Steelers minus 1.5. Steelers at home. West Coast team playing on the East Coast on the early AM spot. Steelers going to blow them out. Obviously, the Steelers can't score, but the Steelers defense is strong. And I just don't think they're going to let J.K. Dobbins and that Chargers defense run through them. I don't think so. And I just think uh, Justin Herbert had a, a uh, ankle injury, so he might not even be 100%. You get TJ Watt chasing you when you can't run. I don't like that at all. I think the Steelers on a blowout. Alternate spread, minus seven. Ooh, I like that. I, I'm i taking the opposite approach. I think it's a one-point game, or it's a tie game, 
and Harbaugh goes for two, and it just ends up either minus one or plus one. So that's why I'm taking those Chargers. But yeah, that's I think- a wild take. I think I get for entertainment purposes, but yeah, you just like it's gonna be a one point game. So yeah, take one and, team. And Harbaugh's two. going for going by two, so that's why you take Chargers plus one and a half. You're wrong, but yeah, go ahead. That's, yeah, I'm, a, I'm Doctor Strange. I went through a thousand different realities, and that only happens once in a billion. So you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it'll be a close game, but yeah, I think the uh, Justin Herbert injury is something to keep an eye on. Eagles okay. Saints Saints minus two and a half. AJ Brown is out. Eagles just lost a close one on Monday on Monday night, short week. Saints look like great. They're going to be at home, one of the top best home for the advantages. Yeah, give me the Saints. Give me the Saints minus three. Uh, Derek Carr is good enough that like you, you can't not give them. Their run game seems to be good. They got that uh, offensive tackle, the new guy. I seen the clips of him. That guy's a beast. So yeah, give me uh, Saints minus three. All right, I like that. I uh, I think the Saints could be due for a yearly stinker. You know, they always just have like a random. They're killing it. They're killing it, and they just blow a game badly. And I think the Eagles is like almost a must win, right? Yeah, I'm sure. Mean, they're one and two in one of the worst divisions in football, so. Yeah, that's fair. Or one and one. Right. They're going to be one and two if they lose. There, yeah, they're going to be one and two. Uh, also, I had I had that thing where I had A.J. Brown in fantasy, but no one had Dotson. So I took, picked up Dotson, and I was thinking, like, you, doesn't it always happen where a guy with pedigree like Dotson just comes in out of nowhere and gets you 100 points? And he, I think he had one catch, and I lost my game. Yeah. So, yeah. Packers Titans Titans minus two. This is like my lock of the week, by the way. Uh, it's Malik Willis is playing, and they're going to try to just run the ball like they did last week. I think the Titans are a good enough team to shut down a run. Obviously, Josh Jacobs is an amazing running back, but they're going to make Malik Willis throw the ball to win. I did see Jordan Love practicing, but I just mm. feel like if that's your franchise quarterback, which you gave all this money, you don't want to risk him by throwing him in too early and potentially risking a bigger injury. So, with that being the case, the Titans minus two and a half. It's probably a game where most people are going to bet the Packers and the Titans are going to win by 17. And people are like, what the fuck? Wow. I think it's a Malik Willis revenge game. Everyone knows you don't piss off Malik Willis. He's just a beast. Is he? Did he Did he do that <laughs> enough to show you that last game? They ran the ball. John Jenkins <laughs> had like 150 yards. They were getting like eight yards to carry. That was not Malik yeah. Willis that beat the Colts. <laughs> uh, I just don't see in what fucking world Will Levis is favored against any team but like the worst three teams in the league. So I'm taking the Packers lock of the week. But also, this is their first home game, too. Oh, no, yeah. they played the Jets at home. They played the Jets at home. Okay. And the uh, Titans defense yeah. has looked all right. So, I mean, I'm, I get it. Green Bay's good, though. I would say Green Bay's a solid team, top to bottom. So, I mean, that's a game I wouldn't touch. But, yeah, mm. I like the Titans minus two and a half. Here's a game I wouldn't touch just because of the spread. Browns are six and a half over the Giants. Take it. You got the best defense in football against Daniel Jones and Devin Singletary. Yeah, I don't see how they keep that game close. They're at home. Buffalo Browns are going to be a tough place to play. Uh, the Giants are on the. They're imploding. They're not going to win. Six and a half is less than a touchdown. And if you look at games, very rarely do teams. It's either a three point game or a seven point game. Teams don't win by four. Yeah. Did you see the Giants hard knocks? No. Oh. Uh, did you see the clip where like the the owner of the Giants said like to the GM, hey, if you let Saquon Barkley go, and if he goes to a division rival and he does really well, I'm going to be very upset. It was like a kiss of death moment. Yeah. So that guy's yeah. probably just playing on Saquon Barkley's downfall because we're only in week two already, and he did drop the t- touchdown, right? He's like, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> he dropped the ball. Woo! Started high-fiving his wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bears Colts Colts minus one point five. I'm an Anthony Richardson believer. I'm just gonna be honest Ooh. with you. I think he has the tools. Uh, the Bears he can't throw a ball, Jared. What do you he cannot mean? throw he a ball. Throw, he can't throw a ball under ten yards. That guy throws seventy yard darts down the field, bro. <laughs> they just need some Tyreek Hill out there, man. You can't have Michael Pittman Jr. as the Tyreek Hill. Michael Pittman Jr. is a catch receiver guy. He's one of them possession receivers, man. Larry Fitzgerald. You need a guy. You need Tyreek Hill, Xavier Worthy. You need somebody to just run fast than everybody and, and, and Anthony Richardson to throw the ball 30 yards over. Just overthrow somebody who you can't overthrow. That's how they win. And Alec Pierce, a white guy, can't do that. He's been doing it. But that can't be your guy. 
Yes. Uh, I think just a little umbrella co- coverage with Anthony Richardson and then stack the box a little bit and he can't do anything. So Yeah, and, I, and I, as I told you earlier, I'm a Bears believer because Clay is there. You're right. You sweat, you sweat me. Let's go right. Bears. Yeah, Jonathan I think Taylor, they, he's tall. Yeah, I think the quarterback play and the offensive play will be a push, but the Bears defense I think is a lot better than the Colts. So yeah, that's why I'm going Bears. Uh, ooh, Dolphins Seahawks. My brother will be at this game. Are you going? You're, you're on the West Coast right now. I'm not going. Okay. You should. It's a quick flight. Southwest, like 100 bucks. Should I? No, I got things to do this weekend. All right. Seahawks minus uh, four. The Dolphins going in with Skylar Thompson. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, I would, I'm not picking a side 100% officially because my brother's there and I'm biased. Uh, I think the Dolphins have a good defense. I yeah. think them without, with a backup quarterback limits that offense strongly. They're going to lean on the run. Uh, obviously, the Seahawks don't yeah. have Bobby Wagner anymore, so it doesn't scare me as much as it used to. And the Seahawks have only won bad teams. They beat the Broncos in a close fashion, and then they beat the Patriots. Uh, they're at home, and 12th man is real. But I think the Dolphins have a chance to go out there and beat them. If two was playing yeah, this line. Yeah, I think also the- – mm-hmm. Minus two and a half, I would take the Seahawks maybe, but minus four, I, I think you nailed it on the head. I think the Dolphins can cover four and maybe win, you know? I hope they win. This is a weird one. The Raiders minus five over the Panthers. Yeah, give me the Raiders 100% of the time. They're starting Andy Dalton in his first start in a while. They're at mm-hmm. the Raiders stadium after they just beat one of the top teams in football. Uh, the, the stadium should be rocking. The Panthers fans aren't traveling. I don't see any reason why you would spend your money to go to Vegas. I mean, you've already lost enough that you do really want to go out to the fucking the Aria and pay $50 a hand on Blackjack, lose $2,000 and go cheer and watch your team get their ass whipped? I don't think so. That being the case, give me the Raiders minus six and minus five. Uh, Max Ooh. Crosby is pretty much unblockable. The Panthers defense ain't shutting down none of that. The, and Gardner Minshew is better than you think. He's not as bad as you think. So give mm. me them. Vontae Adams is still a beast. You name me a cornerback on the on the Panthers that can hold Vontae Adams. I'll wait. I don't think I could name more than two defensive players on the Panthers. So yeah, you're right. Yeah. So yeah. Who do they? Who's right. their best player? The Panthers. Like, give me their two or three best players. I mean, Nick Thurman is their backup D tackle. I worked out with him in in uh, in Arizona, <laughs> so I like that guy. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh. Ravens Cowboys, maybe a game of the week. The, this game's gone back and forth. It was a pick 'em yesterday. Now it's Ravens minus one. All right, this is where it goes. I love the Raven flock. I think they're one of the best fan bases in the game. Obviously, they're zero two, which is sucks because they could have easily beat the the Chiefs in week one, and they should have beat the the Raiders in week two. Uh, with that being the case, I think the Cowboys run away with this one. Uh, Cowboys. Cowboys run defense isn't great. Derrick Henry will have a game, but I just think the Cowboys at home with all the star power. Lamar Jackson's offensive line, they all left. They, they don't have enough money to pay all the star players they're playing in the offensive line. Only thing he has is Ronnie Stanley. I think Bozeman's okay. Um, I just think that this Baltimore being favored against the Cowboys at home is ridiculous. Obviously, the Cowboys do have some holes, but CeeDee Lamb is still one of the best receivers. Dak Prescott's a very serviceable quarterback. And I think even Ezekiel Elliott's a good job done short yardage. Uh, Ravens defense is their major play, but I think the Cowboys have the tools at home to win this game by seven. So the fact that they're a dog is kind of shocking to me. Maybe I'm missing something. Is somebody hurt that I didn't know? Maybe Dak Prescott is nursing an injury I didn't see. But, yeah, that's a really fishy line. Yeah, it is a fishy line. And also – where do you stand on like must wins? Because every game, like you hear people talk, oh, it's a must win, where every game is a must win. But like the yeah. Ravens, they can go 0 and 3. So I guess, can they yeah. try harder? But no. Love the Ravens again. I'll, I'll phrase that. I do think the Ravens are going to take a step back this year. I think um, hmm. people, they got heartbroken in the AFC Championship game. It's hard to rebuild that same energy. They lost a lot of players in defense from Chuck Clark, Geno Stone. Pat Queen, that defense was mm-hmm. the heartbeat of that team, and they're still pretty good. Don't get me wrong, Kyle Hamilton's a beast, Marlon Fuller, Marlon Humphrey's a beast. Obviously, Roquan is probably the best linebacker in football, but I just don't think that uh, that team can keep up. Mark Andrews is out hurt now. Isaiah Likely is a good tight end, but I just don't think they have the tools to repeat what they did. And if they go down mm-hmm. 0-3, you start having inner toy mode with the team starting to argue. Harbaugh's yeah. a great coach, but at the same time, not everybody's going to go undefeated every year. Yeah, they're not going to. Beating them one season in the AFC every week, every season. Yeah, yeah, it'll be sad. I hope. I could see them doing like a nice little turnaround. Like if you could fade them early and then 
whatever the odds are for them to make the playoffs, if they go to like plus 200, like you jump on that, plus 300 even? I don't know. I don't know. They lost a lot. Yeah. They lost a lot. I'm surprised they let Patrick Queen, not like they had a choice, but to let him go to the Steelers, like how he was a beast. You can't just well, let him go to a division rival. The theory is the salary cap, when the quarterback's taking 30% of the salary cap, most times teams have to make strong sacrifices. And it's happening mm-hmm. a lot. Like the offense just yeah. did that. And so it's it's really hard to build, uh, keep the top guys around. So you really have to just draft well. If you get a star quarterback that's good enough to carry your team, you have to do really good in the draft to keep your team afloat because you can't keep star players. You can't pay them the market value. And so those teams that have quarterbacks that are, like, wealthy and can take pay cuts to help people get in, like, the Chiefs, honestly, Pat Mahomes deals with a lifesaver for them. He only makes, like, $45 million a year. Yeah. Compared to Joe Burrow, going to make 60 and all these other guys making, like, that's another, like, seven to $8 million you can give a top player to come into your team. So, yeah. Where do you stand if you're a quarterback, the players who take the, the price cut to stay with their team versus max out their money? Well, I think, honestly, everything is smoke and mirrors. Tom Brady made a lot of money taking price cuts by having the team have the TB12 brand right there, and they were paying them under trouble to, like, take care of players. So I don't want to snitch, but, like, there's ways you can make sure people are financially well off while not counting against the salary cap. And smart coaches and GMs and people who are smart enough to do it can get away with it. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. And I hate to say it, Deshaun Watson is a must win. That's why, actually, I'm going back to the Browns versus the Giants. I like that to be my pick of the week, and I think the Cowboys over the Ravens is a nice pick of the week too. I had a plan 15 years ago where I think it ended up happening and then someone got fired or sued for it. But I thought, like, let's say you're the New York Giants and you want to pay Mahomes or whoever it is, but you have the salary cap restrictions. You go to Goldman Sachs or whatever, like, hey, you know, I'm sure he has a lot of the owner of the Giants has a lot of powerful friends who are big Giants fans. Like, hey, buddy, you're a big fan. What if you sign Mahomes to a hundred million dollar endorsement deal, and he comes to the Giants and he does all your stuff with you and blah blah. blah. So then they kind of get around the salary cap by having them sign a big endorsement that he couldn't get in Kansas, hypothetically. And then we're just in the college NIL clusterfuck of NFL, right? This, this yeah. is what you want. You want the chaos. <laughs> Some people just want to watch the world burn. Yeah, and the next thing you know, the Colts will never be good again. They just never will be good. <laughs> they they good. can't compete with the advertising dollars of the New York Cities and San Francisco's. Yeah, exactly. Uh, speaking of San Francisco, Ra- uh, Niners minus seven, Rams. This is a rivalry, but the Rams mm-hmm. are defeated. They are yeah. too hurt. Uh, Aaron Donald's gone. Uh, 49ers run defense is great. There's, I feel like the stadium is going to be 90% Niner fans anyways because L.A. has a lot of Niner fans, and it's a six-hour mm-hmm. drive, and who wouldn't want to spend the weekend in L.A. when you're here? The food bowl's mm-hmm. going on. Come out and do the food bowl and go to the game on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, a road dog a road dog seven-point favorite is nuts. But when the Cardinals just beat you by 25 points, the Niners come to town, I think minus seven and a half. Yeah, that's fair. And, yeah, the Rams are just depleted on – Offense in terms of all their injuries on the line, receivers, obviously. I'm going to make this a nightmare of an edit to give you, but this is a theory I have. Obviously, mm-hmm. last week, Vegas just raked in money, like, easily. All those favorites that lost, and most of your average betters are favored better, and they raked in money. And they're making so much money. They made, like, $11 billion last year, and this year they're making so much money that you ever think that they're going to be like, hey, let's, let's give a weekend where we let the favorites win. Let's, let's, let's let the people build up the bankroll. And that's what these lines look like. It looks like there's some obvious, like, am I missing something? And, like, maybe Mm. people will trip themselves and be like, yeah, give me the Panthers plus five. But it's like, no, it's common sense that, yeah, this team's not going to go out there. I would like to see a study done on, like, games that are minus seven and, like, how how often they go to, like, 14-point blowouts, 18-point blowouts. Like, how much... Well, I think that, that the, weird, the weird stat is that NFL teams that are uh, over a touchdown favorite, like nine and a half, eight and a half, those teams are actually, I think it's like 65 to 75% the dog covers. Ooh. Very rarely do big spreads actually handle themselves. But this is a touchdown push. By the time it gets game time, though, I guarantee you that's seven and a half, eight. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I take that as well. Um, Lions Cardinals. This is an interesting one. Lions are only minus three point favorites. Cardinals are a good team. 
They're a good team. Buda Baker's a great player. They've been drafting well. They got a young, hungry core. Kyler Murray has been slept on. He's not as bad as you think. James mm-hmm. Conner's a great running back. McBride is a tight end as a secretly secret good. And Marvin Harrison Jr. likes to just fuck with people. And so he gave everybody a head start that first week being like, oh, man, ass, right? And then he just took off. And so, yeah, Larry Fitz Jr., Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. I think they That's- need to call Marvin Harrison the shark or some sort of cool nickname because he's, like, so scary watching him run. It looks like he's running, like, an average regular pace. Like, he, I've never seen someone so smooth. Like, he, it's like he's floating. Yeah. But he's, like, running much faster than everyone else. It was so weird just seeing him just be, like, a leisurely jog, but he's a beast. Yeah, he's great. I mean, his dad killed people. He kills defenses, so, you know. Whatever happened there? I feel like that just disappeared. Hey, we don't talk about it. <laughs> no one talks about it. It's very odd. It's like he's some sort Everybody of presidential about candidate. Talks about it. It's, they don't talk about it much more afterwards, huh? It's like some sort of Joe Epstein list. It's like if you talk about it, you're dead. I don't it's call a- Candyman in the mirror. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, now you got me scared. Chiefs Falcons. <laughs> Chiefs minus three and a half. Yeah, maybe I'm biased because my brother Claire's they didn't want him back. Uh, the Falcons. Uh, they shouldn't have won last week. Uh, that was Three. a fluke. They feel good. They're at home. The Chiefs be good. There's no way that defense slows down Pat Mahomes in the offense. I think Travis Kelsey gets involved. Uh, the Chiefs defense, as I told you, they've been strong. They're a strong defense because. Pat Mahomes is not taking 35% of the salary cap. And with that being the case, I think the Chiefs go out there. And this is going to be a season where they're going for a three-peat, and they're possibly might be going for an undefeated record. I just think the Chiefs are that good on defense. Mm. I think the Chiefs will win by more than four points. I think if you wait like- in game, the first drive, you can catch the Chiefs at like minus two, minus one, and they're guaranteed to get that one. They could win by a field goal because Andy Reid doesn't care about your spread. So three and a half, that hook does kind of scare me. But I think they are class – full class ahead of the other team. So, yeah, give me the Chiefs. I never place any weekly bets because I live in Costa Rica, so I have to text a friend who places a bet for me, then I send him. But I was so cocky on my – because I was killing it on Sunday, and I sent him $100 to place a parlay on the Eagles to destroy the Falcons and then also the Chiefs to destroy the Falcons because it was minus 3.5. I was like, Eagles crushed them by 10, and they should for sure cover the 5.5 spread. And then that Falcons line, by the time it was game time, would be like six and a half. And sure enough, Kirk Cousins fucking killed me. I lost some Dude, money. What kind of book you got where you can bet the same team? Like, how did they let you bet two weeks? Who knows? What if Kirk Cousins got hurt? Knock on wood. Yeah, no, just- it was just like uh, DraftKings or FanDuel. You can do it. Like, sometimes they'll have the next games up. So, yeah. yeah. Was it just $100 so for it to be honest with me? I'm trying to get people to be more honest with gambling because people will be like, yeah. I only bet $100 and they really had $1,000 on it. No, I, I would never. I've got a, a kid on the way. I can't be betting no thousand dollars. What's the largest bet you've ever placed? I was drunk. It was a Super Bowl where Joe Burrow was down at halftime, but the Bengals are really dominating. And I put fifteen hundred dollars down on a Bengals comeback, and they're like plus two ten. And then they did come back and still lost, just barely. But that was yeah. a high. I'm, I've been chasing that dragon ever since. I got you. Because there might be people watching your podcast that are going to bet a lot more than the $100 you're betting. They're like, yeah. fuck Frazier. This motherfucker told me the goddamn <laughs> you know, for the best team. You know, you just got to be careful. Yeah, you're right. And then all of a sudden they're coming after me. That makes sense. Yeah. We have two you're, Monday we, night games. Oh, yeah. I love when that happens. Jags, Bills. Bills minus five. Give me the Bills to get their ass whipped. I think Jaguars Ooh. might line up too good. Uh, Jaguars are better than you think. Jaguars should have beat the Dolphins. They got fumbled mm-hmm. on the goal line. They should have went there and beat them. They came back. They were getting their ass whipped against the Browns. They were, like, down 17-0. And they could have came back and won that game. So, like, and I think that's against one of the best defenses. And I just think the Jaguars are undervalued right here. Uh, I think the Bills are overvalued. Obviously, James Cook had a hell of a night. But they beat the, they beat the Dolphins by – 20 points. I would correct if I'm correct. They won by 20. Mm-hmm. And that's with four interceptions, one for a touchdown, the quarterback getting hurt, the team not converting on three fourth and one fourth and ones. And they only won by 20 with a long touchdown run, a pick six. So that's 14 points, two short field off a bit opportunities. So like the fact that they only scored 31 points is kind of scary to me that they had that many opportunities. So they're not as good as you think they're overvalued right here. 
Yes, they're at home. Yes, it's Monday night. Um, but I think the Jaguars, especially in a, I think the Jaguars are in a much more must win situation than the Bills are mm-hmm. right now. I think the Jaguars come out there and beat them outright. Yeah, I'm definitely taking the Jags to cover. I'm scared for Trevor Lawrence because they have a chance to go 0 4. They've got a hard game next week, too. So they're in tight. That could be an 0 4 start for a team I really no, have high hopes for. You're going to beat the, the Bills or not. I don't think the Bills win 11 games. They can, you can't still bet over under on team wins. But, yeah, uh, you the can. Bills, Really? They they do that? Yeah. What happens? What betting app are you on that I'm not seeing? This is that's nuts. I feel like everywhere you can bet like still over unders on on stuff. It'll just you'll have the ju- the juice will be different or the spread will be different. I'm sure now the Bills maybe started the year at ten and a half. Now it's probably eleven and a half. All right, I'll look for it, but I doubt that's yeah. the case. But yeah, yeah I, I still think the Bills. I'm 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 taking them on under that Monday night performance did not. I mean that Thursday night game did not sway me to think that they were great. And you add the fact, this is just my thought process. This is insider information how things work. If you play on Thursday, especially if you win, you get the weekend off. So guys get to go do what they want. Sometimes people go to their high schools, their colleges, they go watch games, and then they come back and they have a Monday night game. So, like, a lot of these guys lax, and they're not necessarily in high preparation mode. Where I think the Jaguars, is, this, is, this is the game I think is the Kendrick Lamar versus Drake game, right? Ooh. Obviously, yeah, Kendrick, when he caught out Drake, people think that, like, he just did that randomly. No, he was – preparing he was watching drake while drake was not watching him and so he was ready for that beef the dog the, the jaguars are like we're watching the bills while the bills aren't watching us and so i think that's the case i think the, the jaguars have come out there and they not like us in buffalo so don't you think drake just gets it a little too harsh i feel like we really piled on to drake oh my god he's a damn pedophile you canadian have you not heard he, i thought just he kendrick lamar said that but it's not true why would Kendrick Lamar say that if it isn't true? Kendrick Lamar is not a person just make up fibs. You know, he, didn't he say a lot of shit that wasn't true or no? All right, let me let me rephrase it. All right, pedophile is a word of having sex with a minor, and I don't think he does that. I think Drake is a very predatorial guy when it comes to women that are under the age of twenty five. Hmm. And I don't like okay. that. All yeah. right. And I know there's a lot of Canadians who like, fuck this guy, but I don't care. You've seen it. You, you know it, man. You ever listen to Drake's music? He has a song for every girlfriend he's had. And at this point, it's like 25 songs for different women. You're just like, all right, guy, let's calm down. He's almost like Taylor Swift and R. Kelly combined. Oh, that's good. Isn't it? Yeah, I really thought so. Like a pop <laughs> yeah. Taylor Kelly. That could be his new name. Taylor Kelly and Nelly all mixed together. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you brought up the Dolphins. If you're Tua, do you retire? What's your take on Tua? I think you, if he retires, he gets $125 million. Yeah, but if he doesn't retire and just doesn't play because he has concussions, he gets two hundred and like fifteen million. Oh, yeah, I would, very good. yeah, I would just be like, my head hurts for the whole season, and then the off season, make a decision I want to play, come back the next season, and be like, oh, my head still hurts. The NFL is not gonna be like, your head doesn't hurt, you gotta play because like that's a terrible PR move if he goes out there and fucking dies on the field. So yeah. <laughs> honestly, I'm gonna collect uh, extra hundred and fifty million dollars, but just like, yeah, I want to play. That's fair. Do you think he should ever play again? I mean, my brother plays, and if I ever see my brother curled up throwing gang signs unconscious, I'm like, get the yeah. fuck out of here. Get out of there. We're not playing another down. So, right? like, obviously, as a football fan, is your background moving? No, it's just my dog. It's oh, not, I was, it, was, it actually is my background. It looks like a snow. That's a beautiful. I thought that was like a Google <laughs> Zoom yeah, background. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> A beautiful background and that I thought it was a wolf in the background that was like just like, this weird it's your dog okay yeah that's crazy yeah nice little backdrop <laughs> i was wondering if you know it's a dog running around it looks like it's like snow or maybe i'm sure maybe the pixels on my computer aren't great i think just because like the uh it's blurring out the background all shittily you know oh, okay yeah but all in all yeah i don't there's no reason you should die playing football and i'm not saying Tua would die but like i don't want to see him curled up like that that's terrible and that don't get me wrong. That was, the hit looked a little bit scary, but like that's right. a standard you know, hit. It wasn't even like Tua hit him. Like Tua, it went into his chest. It wasn't like Demar was no. out trying to like take his head off or some shit. Is that not crazy that Demar Hamlin's chest took out yeah. Tua's concussion? Like that's the irony writes itself. That is wild. I tweeted it, but then I took it down because I was like, God, oh, no! What if something happens? I felt kind of bad. Yeah. Should I keep that tweet up or is that too hardcore? 
I mean, I ain't gonna lie, Claire's this is Claire's last year, man. Too. Let's get your ass back on this field, man. We got championships to win. What oh. quarterback could they bring in? Like, that's the part that's crazy. Like, who's a quarterback you would feel safe enough to try to win a championship with the weapons they have? And it's not no damn Ryan Tannehill. People keep saying that Ryan Tannehill has never been a like a great deep ball thrower. Like, you need somebody who can launch that bitch. I'm almost saying Cam Newton, bro. What have, what have you traded for Russell Wilson? Oh, that would be solid too. But Russell can't really throw the deep ball that great either. Yeah, but I think he can, he can function, you know? Because you're not going to yeah. get a great player. Yeah, He's who else could get someone to function? Who's a trade Who's a trade candidate? Obviously, like, Zach Wilson. <laughs> but I heard people on Twitter talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, as, as much as you want. I love Cap and what he stands for. Mm. Cap is 10 years removed. Like, Cap hasn't mm. – Cap at this point is, like, in the same breath, like, of like, <laughs> like Adrian Peterson plays his cap. <laughs> yeah. What about the Chiefs backup? What's his name? He can Who's function. Uh, shit, I forgot. Yeah, I feel like he could just function. He's not good, but you just need like a functional. Yeah, little... I'll close my damn computer. You talking about Chan Hitty is the guy that Dolphins you get. This <laughs> like you don't know football, man. Maybe Joe Flacco or somebody. Fuck you talking about Chad Henney. Chad Henney doesn't want to be a starter. He has the best job in football. He's a fucking he backup to one of the best quarterbacks of all time. He's getting Super Bowl rings. He's 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 enjoying life. He probably drinks beer before practice. He's just like, hey, I get to see one of the best quarterbacks play right in front of me, man. I even yeah. give him compliments and tell him what he can do better. Chad Henney, yeah, man, hey, hey, I'm not, I'm done with this shit, guys. Frazier LeBay is now Canadian soccer. His football is people that play soccer. This guy just told me Chad Henney's the guy they should take for the Dolphins or replace the football, replace the quarterback. It's ass. It's you, ass you need to get a – what kind of backups can you, you think you can get? I'm not saying he's amazing. I'm just saying that you got to take what you can get. He's started in a football game. Chad Henney is a professional. He's a glorified assistant coach now. He's a coach that's on the salary cap. There is no way right. Chad He's played no, all right he when he's got, getting to the – he's spelled he's in for the Chiefs. Career numbers. Look at Chad Henney's career numbers. I guarantee his quarterback rating is ass booty. We got he's time. been all right when he's had to fill in for the Chiefs. He's been all right. And, you know, he's been, like, around Patrick Mahomes. I'm sure he's just kind of getting all that aura stuff. Is that what you think happens? Is that what happens to people who are around Pat Mahomes to become great because Pat Mahomes is just taking hot fucking mustard yeah. takes in his deep voice and Trump-loving yeah. wife? No, that's not how it works, bro. <laughs> that's not how it fucking works at all. If you're ass, you're ass. And if you're good, you're good. Pat Mahomes has it. Chad Henney does not have it. Yeah. Wait. I think you you don't have much to choose from, so you kind of just got to choose the shittiest no, option. They're good. 10, there's, I can name you seventy five better options at quarterback than Chad Henney. You're Ooh. not getting off of this one. You said it's something very stupid. And I'm going to make you live with it. Even your dog's like that's an ass take, Frazier. <laughs> dogs barking, screaming, and something. Uh, all right. Well, last game, Commanders Bengals. Bengals minus seven point five. Ah, Bengals ain't covering that shit. I'm not the biggest believer in Jaden Daniels being great. I do think they have a great coaching staff. I think they have a great running game. And the Bengals, tra traditionally speaking, from the last five years, they start the season off so bad every year. And so this is one of the seasons where they're one and three. This, I mean, one and two to start the season. What are seven and a half point favorites? They're, I mean, they're zero and three. They're zero and three. I think they lose. I think they they aren't winning by two touchdowns or mm. ten points. I think they definitely. Uh, they might lose outright again. They do this every year. They start off one four, two and five. That's what they do. Look at the, go look at the receipts and then come back to me. I know they're a name brand team that goes. They come alive in November, December, and January. But in the mm -hmm. first month of the season, they've always been pretty bad. All right. So commanders cover. That's a tough commanders one. We go back and forth on that one. Seth, like you said, Seth, ooh. Bold. Ten dollars. Right. Expect to lose it. You're not going to win these bets. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, and this is the Fraser Levay podcast with Jared Kikway. Don't expect to win money is what we come away from on this podcast. I mean, that's the true facts of it. All right, I'm sorry, but yeah. some people need the hard truth. They're making too much money. This should be fun and leisure. If it's not, then yeah. And that's me yeah. also just getting ahead of it because in, in a year from now you can be like, yeah, guy was right, but you might not think that right now because dope means flowing through your brain. And you're like, I'm gonna win a billion dollars. You're not. <laughs> I'm with, you. I'm with you. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, Jared. I think this is one of my favorite podcasts. Some great insight. Jared you Quay. Oh, what's your TikTok and stuff? Let's throw out some, some stuff. Everything. Everything is Jared Quay, and I do a bunch of funny takes. And if you guys like to laugh, come follow me. 
And if you don't like to laugh, come follow me because I got cute pictures of my daughter. And every once in a while, I just, I'm a model. I practice modeling. So, yeah, ladies, yeah. if you're watching, but you're not, uh, follow me at Jared Do you have any comedy shows, uh, comedy shows planned? Yeah. October 19th, if you're in L.A., I have a couple of shows. And then uh, I am – that's it right now. I don't want to speak anything else without 100% mm -hmm. lock. But yeah. If you're in L.A. in October, you come watch me perform and do these great jokes in front of you. Yeah. And if you go to Costa Rica, check out Frage's house. They have a nice puppy that you can eat as long as you're not a, a Haitian immigrant. <laughs> That's it. FanEverland.com as well is my plug. Fraser Levé podcast. Thanks, Jared. You're incredible. You, you nailed it. Uh